Our next talk will be by Vinod Ilangovan, and Vinod is the coordinator at Open Research Knowledge Graph, a crowdsourced platform to make scientific and scholarly knowledge and human communication machine actionable, which I'm sure he'll tell us about. And his talk is on rethinking scholarly communication with the Open Research Knowledge Graph. Yeah, thank you, Tracy. Um, thanks for really organizing this virtual brainstorming event. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about uh, how we can actually bring scholarly communication to the 21st century uh, using Open Research Knowledge Graph. Um, first, I'd like to thank um, people in my team. And in this picture, you could see that uh, there are not all, all of those people are not present in one of those pictures um, because of um, crisis like COVID. Uh, so uh, we have adopted to uh, hybrid modes. And even this meeting is an example where uh, we are doing this as a virtual brainstorming event. Um, so when there's a crisis, we all respond to it. However, does science respond in general? Uh, so when you look at 300 years ago, we have been publishing uh, by print. And uh, 100 years ago, we have still been publishing the same way, but with better uh, documents maybe. And 20 years ago, we have got better with, um, you know, better PDFs and um, it's still going on. So we do, do not uh, really change much in the way how science is published. So it is, um, we are just creating more and better PDF documents rather than uh, better knowledge. Uh, so uh, one could say that science does not harvest the complete potential of digitalization. Um, so one need to di digitalize knowledge and not just uh, documents uh, because apparently uh, the solution to creating better knowledge and uh, achieving uh, a better solution is uh, not creating better PDFs, but creating uh, better science and outcomes that come out of uh, our thinking processes. Um, with that, I would like to um, kind of give you uh, an overview of how much we have been into this uh, a document-centered publication, uh, which creates the publication flood, because as we all know, uh, there is a filter selection that we need to have in order to really look into niche fields, because uh, there are more than a million of publications are published. Um, and even within a very small field, uh, researchers could lack overview of the whole field, uh, which results in la la uh, lack of or loss of knowledge. Um, and one, uh, if one wants to answer a question, uh, it is something like uh, finding a needle in the haystack, uh, which creates this uh, publication flood. Uh, on top of that, uh, a lot of money and time uh, or researchers' time is spent uh, while creating such uh, document-centered information flow. Uh, what this leads to is, again, we need to metrify everything and we need to pull out the best by giving some proxies of something. And we do not really end up uh, creating the better world that we all want to create. Um, I, I just... Uh, uh, highlight that with an example uh, using CRISPR, which is one of the techniques that won Nobel Prize in 2020. Um, so uh, this is a technique that um, edits genome. Um, and if you look for CRISPR in uh, Google Scholar search, I did it this morning. So you would get it more than a million uh, results. Uh, are these really useful? I mean, they are documents. If you want to really ask specific questions about who applied a specific technique and how much does it cost? And can I actually adopt that in a resource limited setting? And how does different uh, techniques compare to each other? Uh, you do not have an answer from Google Scholar. Um, and that is one of the reasons why we need to move away from document-centric information flow towards uh, really taking the potential of digitalization uh, into creating um, uh, creating how knowledge uh, flows through semantic web. Um, and the ORKG or the Open Research Knowledge Graph acts as a lighthouse in the publication flood. Um, and I would demonstrate to you how that acts like this. Uh, we'll Go back to the same example of CRISPR, where um, when you do a, good, do a Google search, uh, Google Scholar search, uh, you only get the documents or, or the published articles about uh, CRISPR. But if you want to ask these specific questions that I already mentioned, uh, we do not have a clear way of uh, addressing that. So we use a graph um, supported technology in order to find those answers uh, where uh, this graph that is working behind uh, in order to represent the knowledge from scholarly uh, 
is from the scholarly content that is already published. Um, so we do not want to focus on how that exactly works. Uh, there are a lot of people working on that. Uh, so we create a knowledge graph and then that knowledge graph is able to answer questions about um, you know, uh, different specific questions. And the advantage of using a graph page, a graph based approach is that it is machine actionable and uh, one can uh, automate finding and linking specific research uh, topics to a specific research uh, problem. Um, and uh, it is also possible to use natural language question and answering uh, when there's a graph technology involved. And one could also explore knowledge in entirely different ways that uh, humans have not yet uh, done. Um, so in, uh, in the ORKG, we have a lot of features and we are developing features depending on um, the requests from uh, specific research communities. Um, but most often we use comparisons, which is comparing different research articles that's published throughout um, in, in any given timeline. And uh, any content in the uh, Open Research Knowledge Graph is a crowd-based uh, content. And it is a crowd-based um, uh, database or a digital library, uh, which enables mission actionable knowledge that is uh, communicated in scholarly literature. Um, so uh, here we do not try to just uh, capture the bibliometric data or the keywords uh, that is usually associated as um, you know, uh, semantic data, but uh, instead we try to really um, structure the scholarly information or scholarly knowledge uh, for us to create a radically open, uh, which also supports a uh, fair scholarly infrastructure. And uh, one could also cite uh, the semanticized or structured uh, information that is uh, taken out of uh, a research article or multiple research articles. And when a person uh, or when a user or a researcher creates such comparisons uh, that can also be uh, minted at DOI, which means uh, we are moving away from what uh, constitutes uh, a minimal publishable unit uh, because uh, now it is just not the publications or an article that is considered as an artifact of the research process, but also the artifact that is also created out of the knowledge that is generated, in this case, a comparison of multiple things, um, could also uh, constitute a minimal publishable unit. Um, so I'll specifically focus on one of the comparisons uh, using uh, COVID uh, um, reproduction numbers as an example. Uh, so this is how the uh, platform looks when you go and look into uh, featured comparisons where you can find comparisons in different topics. Um, when I click into this COVID-19 uh, reproductive estimates that is um, on the uh, bottom of the uh, bottom left, uh, you would get into a screen like that, uh, where uh, you could, on, on, on the uh, left-hand side in the gray, uh, you could see um, uh, different rows uh, that uh, uh, that are called as properties, uh, which are actually taken from the research article, uh, where things are described in the article, and then now we have semanticized or structured the information. Um, on the right in, in the orange or the orange shades, uh, what you see is uh, a comparison across multiple articles, uh, one research that is done in, uh, done based in Italy, the other one done in um, uh, Iran, and so on, uh, at different time intervals, and uh, you have different values uh, that are for um, that are done for different studies. Uh, so one could compare this uh, particular uh, uh, COVID uh, reproduction numbers across uh, different studies and arrive at a conclusion. Um, you know, in the early time, in the beginning of the pandemic, we were not very sure about the uh, R0 numbers or the reproductive estimates of uh, COVID, um, SARS-CoV-2 virus. Uh, so this, is, this could be one way in order to uh, really achieve new um, ways of uh, finding how uh, reproductive numbers uh, differs across different uh, geographical locations. Uh, so that is one such an example where uh, you could look at comparisons. Uh, however, we also have um, uh, other approaches where uh, we use a crowd-based approach where librarians, information scientists, and uh, domain experts who, who are researchers from uh, all different fields come together to uh, create such comparisons and also um, other artifacts such as uh, observatories. Uh, so observatories are one of uh, one of the approaches within uh, the Open Research Knowledge Graph where uh, uh, a specific research community is building a knowledge graph for the community, whereby they ensure high standards and uh, they also create templates so that they do not have to be uh, semantic experts. Rather, this would be a question answer based template where a researcher just have to enter a few values from a research article or from a table uh, from an article and so on. Uh, so if you are interested in uh, creating an observatory for your own research field, uh, please do contact us. Uh, with that, I would like to uh, stop.
uh, by uh, giving some takeaways where we need to rethink scholarly communication, whereby scholarly work can be realized as expressions other than a research article. And we need to also make uh, knowledge more human readable and also mission actionable so that we can explore knowledge in entirely different ways. Um, and uh, the way we do it uh, with Open Research Knowledge Graph is uh, combining a crowd-based approach um, uh, with uh, multiple uh, domain experts and data curators. I would stop there and uh, take questions. All right, thank you very much, Vinod.